Hello and Fulbers, this is Anton, and looks like we're talking about Beetlejuice once again. Because of one intriguing study that, as always, you can find in the description below, that might have recalculated something, and might have discovered something that we didn't know before. With the paper implying that Beetlejuice now has a slight chance of possibly going supernova a little bit sooner. Or maybe even much sooner, depending on what exactly is happening inside the star. And so let's discuss this new study and some of the follow-ups and some of the additional explanations, and I guess let's quickly start with the obvious. So in the last four years, this star right here really surprised the scientists. First, in 2019, it dramatically dimmed in brightness. At first this was obviously unexplained, and was definitely something that surprised quite a lot of scientists, but various follow-up studies revealed that it was most likely due to a massive cloud released from the star's surface that was basically in a position blocking the star from our view. Now the actual origin of this particular cloud is still unclear, and it was even suggested by one of the previous studies that it might have been a result of some kind of a really large object like a planet disturbing the surface of the star, or even being swallowed by the star. Either way though, at the moment this is still the best explanation. Then, very recently, and specifically in the last few months, additional follow-ups revealed the opposite. Now the star is almost 50% brighter than its average, and that is definitely something nobody expected. In other words, its luminosity increased so much that it's one of the brightest stars in the night skies. And that by itself obviously cannot be explained by something like this. But it's also important to understand that changing brightness for stars is actually pretty common. A lot of different stars go through these cycles of bright dim, bright dim for a lot of various reasons. Here's an example of a typical Mira variable. Based on the first discovered such star, Mira, that you see right there. It's actually sometimes even known as the Star of Wonder. And this unusual variability was discovered back in 1596. In this case though, this particular star changes in brightness because it actually expands and contracts quite regularly, producing the observations you see right here. And this happens with a lot of different stars out there. This is actually really, really common. Even some of the nearby stars, such as Algol, very often change in brightness by quite a lot. And actually at least 30 different stars that you can see in the night skies without the help of any telescope usually produce these variable observations. And Betelgeuse is one of these stars, but in this case it basically had this unusual change that nobody expected that was dramatically different from everything else. So here's for example observations from the last 20 years or so, and you can see that both the dip and some of the recent brightness are very different from what we typically observe. And because the star is obviously one of the candidates for one of the near supernova to us, it became super exciting as a potential target for a lot of scientists specializing in supernova and in aging stars. And so because of either wishful thinking or because it would be super exciting, different scientific teams wanted to actually find more clues of whether Betelgeuse is going to go supernova anytime soon. For example, certain studies looked at ancient reports of Betelgeuse Realizing that in the past, in the last 3000 years, it was much brighter and much more yellowish orange. Now it's a lot more red. Which basically means that it aged quite a lot in just the last 2000 years. With the recent changes in brightness, only providing more hints that maybe something is about to happen. But the thing is, these ancient manuscripts, along with these recent observations, is just not enough evidence to prove anything. And several additional papers we've discussed previously have even suggested that there's quite a high possibility that this star is actually not going to explode for at least a million years. For example, one explanation involved Betelgeuse swallowing something extremely large. Possibly another partner that ended up speeding up the star so much that it started producing these unusual effects. This would have happened thousands of years ago, or possibly even millions of years ago. But this did not stop scientists from trying to prove that, well, maybe it is going to go supernova. And that's what this recent paper does by discovering something nobody has actually thought of before. Or I guess maybe just not to this extent. Here they analyzed Betelgeuse's periods in terms of variability. In other words, they analyzed various cycles when the Betelgeuse changes brightness. And here we know that there are at least four cycles, each lasting 185 days, 230, 420, and 2200. These are not very exact and they're sort of semi-regular, but that's how the star usually changes its brightness. And it turns out that the longest period, the one that's 2200 days long, whose origin is actually unknown to us, could potentially be the fundamental mode, representing the main cycle for Betelgeuse's pulsations. And if it's the main mode, it does actually change its overall age and what we already know about its evolution. And so here, by ignoring previous assumptions, including swallowed stars, 
the scientists decided to compare all four periods in the process of discovering that these pulsations are very similar to what we usually see in a much later stage of what's known as core carbon burning, or basically when the star starts burning carbon, usually near the end of its life. But more intriguingly, their model seems to actually explain that dimming event we saw in 2019 really well, including the brightening event right now. And if this is correct, and if the scientists found the explanation for Betelgeuse's unusual brightening and dimming, it makes Betelgeuse the next candidate for what's known as galactic supernova, or in essence, the event we've all been waiting for. The event that would produce the nearest supernova to planet Earth in the last few centuries. But as always, extraordinary claims, extraordinary evidence, and so on and so forth. So is this actually what's happening, or is this something that's going to be disproven pretty quickly? Well, at the moment, there's only been one follow-up, the one that you can actually once again find in the description, and it does discover certain potential mistakes, suggesting that maybe this is not what's happening after all. Obviously, this is something that's going to be discussed for many months. But let's just, for now at least, assume that maybe it does happen. When is it going to happen? What's going to happen? And should we start buying popcorn? Well, the bad news here is that, um, yeah, it will still probably take a while. That process of carbon burning might still take hundreds of years. And when it's finished, it will take at least 30 to 40 years before the star is ready to go supernova. So, possibly a few centuries from now, at least. And that's assuming that the actual calculations are all correct, and that nobody finds any disagreements with this proposition. But as I mentioned, there's already one at least. But once again, let's assume that it does go supernova. So what's then? Is it going to be dangerous? Should we actually prepare for something? Or is it basically going to be just a kind of a firework? Well, if it does explode in the next few hundreds of years, or even in the next few decades, we have pretty much nothing to worry about because the star is pretty far away. Because it's over 550 light years away from us, we're only going to have some effects from this explosion. The first thing we're going to detect is going to be a huge rain shower of various neutrinos. Normally we detect one or two, in this case we're going to be seeing millions if not billions all coming from the same direction, but none of these will affect us in any way. And following this, we're going to suddenly realize that there's a really bright object in the night skies and even in the daylight. Within about one or two weeks, it's going to become just as bright as the full moon. It will probably maintain its brightness for at least a few weeks, and within about six months, we're still going to see it to some extent, but it's mostly going to resemble a really bright star. A star that's going to become dimmer and dimmer every week, and eventually disappear into nothingness. And more importantly, the iconic shoulder of Orion, within about a year, is going to be gone completely. Instead, it's actually going to be a neutron star, but it's going to be very difficult to see it in any frequency except for maybe X-rays. But what about things like radiation? Well, even though Betelgeuse supernova is going to produce a lot of cosmic rays, the atmosphere of planet Earth is going to block most of them. And so even though there might be some change to the ozone layer, overall, it's going to be very minuscule. The supernova is also going to make quite a lot of radioactive elements, such as iron, that in the next few millions of years, is going to get deposited on the planet and possibly even integrated into various types of life. Previous samples from various sediments have actually already discovered signs of supernova happening millions of years ago, but because the distance is still pretty far, the amount is going to be very small, and it's going to have no effect on the planet whatsoever. It's just going to be one of those things that maybe future archaeologists can kind of ponder about. Which basically means that the supernova is really going to be just more of a marvel, and as I mentioned, a firework, not really a hazard in any way. But because currently we're basically in the golden age of astronomy, or practically the peak of astronomical research, which will hopefully keep going for quite a while, obviously quite a lot of scientists are really hoping to see this star go supernova as well, so we can study all of this in as much detail as possible. But unfortunately, maybe it might not happen after all, and maybe what we're actually seeing is going to be explained in some other way. Future studies will tell us more, but until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.